Welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. We start things off with track and field. Jamaica once again dominated the medal table at the just concluded 51st staging of the Carifta Games held at the Easter weekend at the Kirani James Stadium in the Spice Isle of Grenada. Jamaica compiled 84 medals, 45 gold, 23 silver and 16 bronze. The Bahamas second with 34 medals, 9 gold, 13 silver and 12 bronze. TNT picked up 4 gold, 11 silver and 12 bronze to finish the championship with... Uh, uh, the number three spot in the medal table host Grenada finished with uh, 14 medals, one gold, six silver and seven bronze, making them the only other country to reach double figures. The Ghanese uh, finished fourth in the medal table as well. A total of 11 records were broken over the three day event. Here's a look at the record breakers and the events that they contested. The first record of uh, the meet on Friday was achieved by the Antiguan Malik Francis in the boys under 17 javelin and uh, there was a 400 meter under 17 record as well for Nicole Bramwell the Jamaican who smashed Usain Bolt's record and a significant number of field events records there including uh, Javante Smith the boys shot put the girls javelin Dory Ray Scott and uh, the long jump for girls Janae DeGans, who was the Austin Sealy Award winner. Triple jump winner, Jada Robinson of Jamaica. Pole vault records for Jules and Roll from the Bahamas and St. Lucia. And uh, for the boys pole vault with uh, Brendan Vanderpool as well. So a lot of field events records broken uh, at the championship. Trinidad and Tobago's Janae DeGans was named winner of the prestigious Austin Sealy Award that honors a top performer at the three-day meet. The 17-year-old smashed the girls under 20 long jump record during the morning session of Monday's final day and later returned to anchor the Twin Island Republic to a silver medal in the girls under 20 4 by 400 relay. We are pleased to be joined on the phone by Sportsmax TV editor-in-chief and track and field analyst Leighton Levy. Leighton, welcome to the Sportsmax Zone. Great to have you on as usual. Hey Lance, how are you doing? Hi Maria, long time I haven't seen you guys, but you know, it's the circumstances. Yeah, well let's, let, let's start with the fact that most of the records broken were in, in field events, significantly a lot of pole vault and javelin marks achieved, and this probably tells us something about the upsurge of uh, non-track standards at the Carifta Games generally. Yeah, and it's across the board, I think, in the Caribbean. When you look at what has been happening in the last two decades or so, Lance, the field events in the Caribbean have picked up tremendously. When you look at, for example, Anderson Peters, who is from Grenada, the world champion and, of course, a perennial contender at the global level, you look at what has been happening in terms of the long jumps and the triple jumps in terms of what Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean are doing, respectively. It's not really a surprise. When you look at... The, the throws, for example, where the, you know, Jamaica has had, you know, Travis Michael and Frederick Dacre doing global, I mean, contending at the global level. So when, when, what we're seeing across the Caribbean is a spread of the, the depth of talent that's emerging now and it's beginning to manifest itself at the, at the Caribbean Games level, which is very encouraging indeed. Yeah, of course, we have already established that even when we were previewing the games last week, that there was very little chance of Jamaica being troubled as the top medal-winning team. They have been doing so since 1985, unbroken. And uh, again, a solid performance from the Jamaicans. But we are seeing uh, a rise in some of the other countries challenging. Um, well, TNT and Bahamas over the past few decades have had their, their moments at the Carifta Games. But I was particularly impressed uh, Leighton, with the Guyanese and the way they showed themselves up over the past three days in Grenada. Absolutely, Lance. Well, I think, but before I even mention that, let me just mention Trinidad and Tobago. Not because Mara is on set, but I think their performance this year has suggested that I think they finally are getting the things right at the N3 and, and, and the, the, you know, at the level in, in Trinidad, where Trinidad has, is that was one of those countries that has so much talent but has not. Been, it has not been reflected at the character level for a few years. 
for them to end up with 27 medals and, you know, in many instances, silver and a couple of gold medals as well, it suggests that things are moving in the right direction in Trinidad, finally, and I hope it continues. But for Guyana, clearly, there is a plan afoot in Guyana, and I think going forward, I think given the issue with the elements of population and now the resources that Guyana has at their disposal, there could be a threat to the Jamaican dominance at the Caribbean Games in years to come. Those four gold medals were quality gold medals. When you look at what Springer has done, and of course, Malachi Austin, the 400s, and the, the mixed relays, how, how impressive they were in the, the dominance in which they won that. And of course, um, Atalia Dixon, I hope I pronounced her first name right, in the 100 meters, it tells you that Guyana is beginning to put together a program that will make them a legitimate, legitimate threat in the years to come. And I was very impressed with their performances overall, because not only did they win the gold medals, but the, the standards at which those medals were achieved was extremely high indeed. Yeah, very, very impressive stuff from Guyana there. Sometimes when we're talking on the zone late, you know, I've always been telling Lance that I feel as if we need to figure out what's happening in Guyana because it's not only in track and field. They've really been excelling when it comes to football. They've been excelling in cricket as well. So, of course, sport on the whole in Ghana is on our rise. And I know we really just have to look forward to see what else uh, the country produces. So it's good for us as a Caribbean. It's good competition by extension. Now, back to Trinidad and Tobago, because I want to hear your take on Janita Gans getting that Austin Celia Award. Um, I don't begrudge her the award, but I think it could have gone to... I mean, there is no specific criteria for the award. So yeah. I'm not going to complain about the guns winning that. Of course, knockout under 18 champion last year. She's clearly made a big step forward. Six meters 50 is the number three under 20 jump in the world this year. But having said that, Michelle Smith from the USVI, her 56-26 in the, in, the in the 400 meter hurdles, is also the number three time in the world under 20 as well. And she also had the number 16 time in the 800, which she won. So I'm not going to begrudge uh, Janet again because I think it's well-deserved. And, and, of course, based on what Austin Sealy, the man who the award is named after, says, you know, who, who am I to argue with that? But I think that award that, that this year could have gone to any one of perhaps two or three other athletes who were outstanding at the championships, which actually speaks to the quality of the championships this year. But, you know, well-deserved for, for, for Gadan, the guys, and I think it, it all goes well for for what, we, what looks like clearly a very solid career going forward. Because 6 meters 50 is the be the world leader at the under-20 level is 6 meters 66. She's not that far away. And, and given what we've seen from her consistently over the past mm -hmm. three years, it suggests that she's, her trajectory is moving in the right direction. So this is this can only be an additional boost for her as she continues to progress in, in the sport. And I think what we see from her clearly has to be an inspiration for other trainers and athletes. We've seen a number of them at the character at the character games this year. And I think it's time Trinidad starts to show what they're truly capable of. And I think this could be the start of something good for Trinidad and Tobago as well. Yeah, and Leighton, a quick word on the prestige associated with this honor because names like Usain Bolt, of course, or Kirani James would have received this award. And it's so important for these youngsters to recognize um, the importance of the Austin Celia Award where the Carifta Games are concerned. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you know, forget Johan Blake as well. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, 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 the list goes on for a bit. The quality athletes who have gone on and won this award have usually gone on and transitioned into very successful senior careers. So this is this is a big a big big um, feather in the cap of, of Jenny the Gans, and I think you know it, it's again looking at recognizing the talent emerging from the Caribbean, and this award kind of pinpoints some of those athletes who usually go on to, to greater things. So if you remember, Brianna Williams won back to back um, awards a couple of a few years ago, and of course she'd gone on to become an Olympic gold medalist and a world champion with silver medalist in the relays. So you know. It's just another example of what this award means for the outstanding athletes of the Caribbean Games. Right, and I want to focus a bit now on the Jamaicans, who, of course, top the table. Nicole Bramwell uh, shattering Usain Bolt's record in the under-17, 400-meter, and, of course, walking away with the gold as well. 
your take, your analysis on how he went about his business? Um, look, Nick Bramwell for me is actually one of my favorite athletes. Huh? <laughs> he <laughs> is an athlete that epitomizes confidence. And if you remember in the Bahamas last year where he, after he won, he said the Bahamas were talking too much, which is one of the reasons why he produced the performance that he did. There was no, that, there wasn't much of that controversy this time around, except for Chinna Poo talking about Jamaican soft, but he should be carefully, but wake the dragon and that, you know, but I'm not, let's get back to Bramwell. The thing is, I think Nicole Bramwell has demonstrated that he is a talent and if he can stay healthy because he's had his injury issues over the years, he will be a factor. And when you look at how mature his performances were, both in the flat four and in the relays where he, his, his 400 strategy seems to be you now, that race pattern, that race plan that he has is now cemented. And I think if he continues to progress at the rate at which he is progressing, I mean, you don't break your same boat record that has stood for 22 years without, you know, you know, noticing that this kid has, is something special here and potentially can make that transition to the senior ranks where Jamaica finally seems to be getting back into its, into its former years of having great 400 meter runs like a Herb Machine with Bert Cameron and others. The reality is that this kid could go on to become something special for Jamaica as well. Antonio Watson, of course, being the latest product of world champion the first in 40 years. But the, Nicole Bramwell, I think, has the talent and the mentality to be to make that eventual transition to, of course, the under 20 level, first of all, and then eventually to the senior ranks. If he manages to stay healthy and manages to stay focused, I think, you know, we use a cliche, the sky's the limit for this young. Mm. Yeah, uh, you know, we're going to discuss the Carifta Games in more detail on Wednesday's show when Ricardo returns to the show. But I want quickly for you to uh, make a few comments on a couple of athletes here. And I'll start with uh, Devonte Howell, the Caymanian 100-meter uh, champion, Barbados-born, and uh, came into the meet a little off-color. 10-5, his PR coming, well, his season's best coming to, to Grenada. But a victory in 10-1-5 to retain his title was was smashing, and he exuded a lot of quality in his victory. Yeah, and he said it. Um, he said, I mean, he was pretty much written off. But 10-1-5 is just 400 of a second outside of just, um, Johan Blake's record, which is 10-1-1, which has stood for a while now. So it tells you just how much quality this young man has. And, of course, if you remember last year, he didn't get an opportunity to, to you know, well, put it this way. Having won last year, you know, coming into this year, he wasn't he wasn't perhaps the favorite to win. And for him to deliver that performance against a quality field, including Jaden Reed and the youngster from Jamaica, who both looked very impressive in this in the semifinals, you know, that he could de deliver that performance against such quality. Because one of the key things about championships, you know, is being able to produce the goods against the best of the best at that level. Mm. And that's exactly what he did, and he did it in impressive fashion. So I was very, very impressed with his performance. Yeah, pity that uh, with K-Man finishing 1-2 in the 100, they weren't able to put together a quartet to challenge for the 4x1 one, one relay, Leighton. But let's move quickly to yeah, the that... Guyanese, because we spoke about them in general earlier on, but Athalia Hinkson, the 100 champion, and Tiana Springer, uh, only 16 years old, um, dominant in her 400 and 200 meter victories, very, very special talent, is she? Oh, yes, absolutely. When you look at, you know, for, for Hickson, for example, when she ran that 200-meter final, if you remember, Natrice East was a heavy favorite, and Natrice East had to fight tooth and nail just to get that win. It tells you about, again, the mentality. Winning at this level, winning at any championship level requires a mental, a, a mental toughness, a mental steel. And what you saw with this young lady is that she believes that she could have won the 200, regardless of the fact that she may not have been the favorite. And she had she forced East to dig deeper than she probably has never done before, has never done before. And you can see the talent is clearly there. As for Springer, look, I would not be surprised to see this girl go to World Under 20 Championships and do well. She might not win, but she certainly will do Guyana proud. And I think in the years to come, given the fact that she's only 16. You know, she's, she's still at the beginning stages of her physical development. And I, I'm looking to see what she can do in the next two to three years should she remain healthy. Because clearly, when you, when you, when you destroy Shania Douglas the way you did in the 400 meters 
and go on to win quite comfortably. And of course, so it speaks to that confidence afterwards. You know, you can tell that this young lady who has a lot in, lot in store and is a very special talent coming out of Ghana. I hope that she finds a proper program to transition into eventually. And because if she gets the right coaching and the, and the right management that keeps her focused, she's going to be a talent to look forward to in two or three years at the senior level. Yeah. And w w what we just looked at was her 200 meter win, was it? Um, her, her 400 meter victory also displayed, Leighton, a lot of quality in her in her strategy in the race because the two Jamaicans had come out of the semifinals looking strong but they they were they I think they burnt themselves out the first 250 meters and what was impressive about Springer is that she wasn't phased down the back stretch when they went away from her she relaxed and kept her composure and when she came storming at the field in the in the final um, in the home stretch um, there was no one who could hold her off. So that told me that even though she's in her first year as a, as a senior from curve to game standards, she has the mental capacity to, to, to do well at crunch time. Yeah, man, she trusted her real strategy. She made her move at about 120 meters to go when Dockery and, of course, Douglas looked like they were going to run a Jamaican one too. And she timed it to perfection. And it tells you that she trusted her strategy. She knew what her race plan was, which speaks to the maturity of the athlete as well. Because you find yourself five to ten yards behind people, the two that people thought were going to be probably the first, the one, two for Jamaica. And then to storm past them with such comfort. I mean, look at how she held her form and her composure going through. And in the last 50 meters, it tells you that this girl believes in her talent and she believes in her strategy and she knew exactly what she needed to do to win this race. And, it, and she pulled off the execution perfectly. So this is one of the reasons why I was very impressed with her performance. And when you look at how she ran in the mixed relays as well, it speaks to how this young lady knows what she's capable of. And she doesn't care who is running against her. She believes she can better them. And that's exactly what she did at this championship. Yeah. I was very impressed with her. And as I said before, I hope that she finds the right, right people around her in the years to come. Yeah, because it's easy to get distracted at this level. Yeah, really, really special talent there. I want to uh, comment quickly as well on the Bahamians who had sent messages in the past week that they are coming to cause some trouble and did because they won a lot of medals and there were quite a few record performances as well, including um, Scott in the in the javelin. javelin. And yeah, there was yeah. a role in the pole vault as well. And they had a few record performances. So the Bahamians, um, as they usually do at the Carifta Games, um, made a point that, you know, the Jamaicans cannot continue to just uh, sit comfortably and things fall in their lap. Yeah, and, and this, this was an improved performance over last year and the year before as well. So this would be very encouraging for, for, their, uh, for the, uh, the B3As there. And I think when you look at uh, the race, Scott, 52, first over 50 meters at this level at Carifta. You know, you look at... Um, the youngster who won the, the, the high jump. Um, he, the, the, the guy that, the guy that Bahamas has always produced talent. I think outside of Jamaica, they probably have the best program there um, in terms of developing the young athletes. And I think what we saw from them suggests that, you know, in the years to come, I mean, look, there are only 300,000 people living in, in, in the Bahamas. And for them to continue to produce the, the level of talent at this level consistently, that tells you how good at admission they have in terms of the program that they have. Because one of the things, you know, I tell people all the time, and they, they scoff at it, but you look at it per capita, they actually outperform Jamaica at, at Carifta and at the global level as well. Because for 300,000 people compared to almost 3 million from Jamaica, they continue pro to produce world-class athletes right throughout. You have the, you know, Pauline Davis, the, the Beckfords, the, the um, Williams Darling, the, of course, you know, Stephen Gardner, and of course, at this level, they continue pr to produce these talents coming through. You can you can never overlook the Bahamas, and I think they have done a good a good thing there in keeping their athletes in a proper program, proper structure that continue to deliver the talent and hone this talent, bringing it through. 
it would be nice now just to see a few more of them coming through at the global level. But look, with 300,000 people, I don't think you can ask for much more from the Bahamas. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you 100% there, Leighton. Thanks for linking with us. And as we said, we will continue our discussion on the Carifta Games. Three days of real world-class competition in the Spice, Spice Isle from Saturday through to Monday. And we'll continue the discussion on Wednesday. Thanks, Leighton. We'll talk again soon, I'm sure. Take it easy, guys. Bye, Leighton. Yeah, and we have a lot more to come on the Sportsmax Zone on the other side of the break. Back with us. We'll <laughs>